I'm ESO and this is the Death Touched Catacomb Strategy Guide Walkthrough, including the location of all unique collectibles, weapons, armor, and how to cheese the boss fight with the Black Knife Assassin easily. The timestamps are below if you want to skip ahead, but first I want to outline if it's worth it to you to do this dungeon early on, since it is located in the starting area of Limgrave directly north from the first step resting spot and south from where this stone bridge stretches out to this tower located in the sea. The death touch catacombs themselves are located right here against the cliff face just here on the map. Now you can see this giant stone bridge behind me in the background and the catacombs are right in front of us accessed through a wooden door leading into the cliff face just here. But this lost spirit will outline some of the lore on the location which I'll discuss further later. Go ahead and open the entrance to the catacombs and you'll find the rest spot in the immediate entrance. This will be our starting point. Now this dungeon contains the Black Knife Assassin boss, a boss that you will actually fight in three separate locations, this being the first location, where once defeated he will drop the Assassin's Crimson Dagger, which is a talisman that when equipped makes all of your critical hits restore your health. This means that if you are backstabbing, parrying or breaking the enemy's poise and then attacking them, you'll get a big chunk of healing each time you do this, as you can see in this example. You will also be obtaining the Uchi Katana in this dungeon as well, which you can only get otherwise if you start with the Samurai class. Finally, we will also get the Death Root, which is a rare item that can be collected and given to an NPC to unlock some unique spells, armor, and weapons. But now let me walk you through the catacombs starting from the entrance. Head into the catacombs and you'll see a door to the boss that is currently locked shut and must be opened elsewhere via a lever. So head to the left and into the catacombs. The area has skeletons within it that cannot be killed by normal weapons. Only if they are killed by weapons that do holy damage will they not get back up again. Therefore the best method is to simply run past them and this is very easy to do since they're so slow and cumbersome. After coming down these stairs head to the right and then head through the archway down into the final room and at this point you're going to want to sprint all the way to the end where you will find the lever that opens the boss room. You can also find three blood red roses on this body located behind you. They're just crafting ingredients. Now at this point you can either die to respawn at the entrance or you can walk back through the skeletons. To be honest it's a good idea to get used to how they move and how easily they can be dodged even in packs. So starting again from the resting place of grace we will now get the Uchi Katana. So head back into the catacombs taking the left once again and heading down the stairs to the left again. But this time, loop back around to the right and come under here through this hidden tunnel to the left. This will guide you along a passage where you can find the crafting materials only available in the catacombs. I always recommend picking them up while you're in the area. Then take the next corridor on the left and you'll find the Uchi Katana just on the ledge here for you to pick up. A truly fantastic weapon indeed. Next we will be defeating the boss, the Black Knife Assassin. So once again heading downwards from the resting spot you can now see the lever has already opened the gate and if you struggle with this boss you can also summon support from the shrine here. Now the Black Knife Assassin will start on half health in this boss fight. If you're using a large weapon, you'll find him very easy to stagger and stun lock since he has such a low poise. He is however very dangerous if you let him get up close to you. But as you can see, his leading light attack can be very easy to parry once you notice him raise his blade above his head like this before he attacks. Now once he leads with his light attack and misses, if you're far enough away, he'll then dodge to the side like this before lunging at you like that. Now it's easy to dodge or sidestep this attack because it's like a straightforward thrust, but when you are close enough he will follow up his light attacks with a series of free close range attacks which you can literally just walk backwards and away from. 
As long as you know that whenever he dodge jumps to the side like this, he will once again lunge at you. This is the best time to sidestep to the right and punish him with a backstab. However, if you see him dragging his knife across the ground creating sparks like this, you should dodge roll backwards, otherwise he will hit you with the slash attack. And those are pretty much all his attacks, and it brings me on to my cheese method. Using a bow, which makes him very easy to punish. So here we are entering the full boss fight using just a bow and arrow, and I do suggest you bring more than 30 arrows if you're doing this yourself. But just to demonstrate, as you can see, once engaged, the Black Knife Assassin will easily sidestep all of your ranged attacks. Often he will dodge every other attack if you spam arrows or spells at him. So really you're just wasting arrows and magic at this point. So the trick is to literally stand there with your bow fully drawn and as soon as he moves at all to start attacking, shoot him immediately. He will then instantly flinch and will stop his attack. So that's all you need to do, just stand there holding down your bow attack, wait for him to start that attack animation and fire as soon as he does. You'll hit him, make him flinch every single time. It is very boring, but it works really well. The only attack you'll want to dodge is when he grinds his dagger along the floor making sparks. As you can see that will hit you if you do not dodge and he is quite hard to flinch while he does that attack. If he does hit you with a couple of attacks and you seem overwhelmed, just back off from him again to reset him and you can just carry on. So just carry on like this until he's almost dead and you can see it works like a charm. But obviously to make this interesting we need to almost die. So we're both one hit from death and then we need to get in an all or nothing parry to finish him. And there you have it, he has dropped the Assassin's Crimson Dagger. And of course do not forget that you should loot this chest at the back of the dungeon to obtain the death route. If you want to know more about this I will eventually link a guide down below in the description that explains how you can get some unique weapons using it if you collect enough of them. Now some of you may have spotted the roots interwoven with corpses of the dead that penetrate this tomb where the boss resides. The flesh is still bloody to the blade. Many of the corpses have been stripped from the now empty tombs that line the walls and attached to this flesh root abomination. But to what end? What is the reason to this madness? At the entrance to the tomb we see a stone door with an engraving of the great Erd tree. The golden tree that we see from a distance from pretty much anywhere outside. Now we can see depicted below the tree are the roots that descend deep underground feeding off these highlighted yellow pustules. What these actually are we don't know for sure, but the fact that they are highlighted tells us they're significant and the tree is drawing off some kind of energy or power. And there are multiple of them, not just a single one. And then around the tree we see a group of people. Are these lords, ladies or peasants? We don't know and we cannot make out who these people could be, but they're all crowded around the base of the tree in its root system. Do they make offerings here to this tree or are they waiting for the tree to give them offering? I do not know for sure, but they seem to have a symbiotic relationship. Within the tomb though it seems like an offering of flesh and blood was made to the tree. To add further confirmation the roots that are found in the catacombs also secrete root resin which is a simple crafting material but the description says that it's secreted from the roots of the great tree. Outside we find a lost spirit who is golden and this usually represents that he is a follower of the finger maidens. He tells us that our hallowed resting place is violated, to refuse the Erd Tree's call, to return to live within death, sickening. Now the Erd Tree mentioned is the giant golden tree that we see outside. Where it is drawing its power from though is still not quite clear yet to us. Now the death root discovered in the catacombs chest has a description that reads that it is a source that gives rise to those who live in death. Meaning that the death root essentially creates more undead and the living that have died in these catacombs are not dead any longer. Which is why that spirit outside seemed to be so sickened by what had taken place here. It also goes on to say that on the night of the dire plot 
The stolen rune of death enabled the first death of a demigod. Later, the rune of death spread across the lands between the underground roots of the great tree, sprouting in the form of death root. So whether or not it was intentional, it does seem like the great tree or the Erd tree's root system has caused the rune of death to spread throughout the lands, contaminating these catacombs that exist in this world. Now we know that the Elden Ring is made up of runes. The rune of death was stolen however, which broke the balance that the Elden Ring initially provided. It also enabled the death of a demigod, which was Godwin. Interestingly, the Black Blade Assassin who drops the Assassin's Crimson Dagger has a description as well that reads that it's modelled after the darkly gleaming blades used in the Night of the Black Knives, those which gave the demigods their first taste of death. Now the Knight of the Black Knives refers to the night the first demigod was killed using the Black Knife Dagger which was imbued with the power of the stolen rune of death which was taken from the Elden Ring and then this dagger was used to kill Godwin. We can actually later obtain that very same Black Knife that killed Godwin but more on that later. I still don't fully understand though the connection to the Erd Tree and why its roots are feeding off the corpses of undead and thus creating more undead here in the catacombs. So my current conclusion based on what I understand so far and please do give me your own theories in the comment section is that the Erd Tree's roots are now feeding off the corpses of those in the catacombs because the Rune of Death was stolen from the Elden Ring meaning that the Erd Tree was no longer being powered by the Elden Ring and had to take its power from elsewhere and because the Rune of Death was stolen it needed to take power from the dead to maintain its sustenance and keep that tree of life looking golden. It took me a couple of hours to research this and kind of come to this conclusion. So, so if you appreciate the lore part of this video, do let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, I just won't bother to talk about this anymore in future videos because I don't want to waste your time. But thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're interested and I'll see you in the next one.